Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back YouTubers and Madden fans, this is Mad Money Shot, sniffing at the Madden cheese as always. Got another Madden 21 video for you today. In today's video, I went through all the teams and all the transactions that were made from Madden 20's offseason until now, and uh, I basically came up with a list of the top 10 teams that either improve the most or the teams that we can't wait to use. I know there's a lot of teams on here that I can't wait to use, whether it's in a CFM, which I'm planning on doing this year, or a uh, just in regular game modes. So these are the most improved teams that we're the most excited about playing with if there's any teams that you think that i left out that you're personally excited about or you think it should have been on this list let me know in the comment section other than that if you want to see more videos like this i try to do an entire series like this every year so hit the like button i'll continue to do that other than that the very first team that i'm looking at is the arizona cardinals now i have them rated pretty much the lowest because they only really made one improvement but that improvement was by far the biggest uh, player that anybody brought onto their roster. So the Cardinals bring in DeAndre Hopkins is enough for them to make this list. Because I know me personally, I want to join the Cardinals team as a franchise in a CFM just because of the receiving core. I mean, between him, Larry Fitzgerald for one more year, Christian Kirk, his speed. I mean, there's so many good uh, receivers on this roster. Andy Isabella, there's so many guys you could work up. The biggest addition on the defensive side came via the draft. They picked up Isaiah Simmons. I didn't even know this guy was going to be a safety. I know that was somewhat something in question. But this guy's a hybrid player. He can play just about anywhere on the field. And a six foot four, ninety three speed safety starting out at seventy eight. That's a win win. So those are two guys alone that make this this team uh, make this list. Uh, next up, we have the Philadelphia Eagles. The Philadelphia Eagles. Um, I typically I'm an Eagles fan, but I typically hate using them in any type of game mode because they always lack speed and they always have poor receivers and poor cornerbacks. Well, they went and solved that in a big way. They went ahead and got a lot of speed. Uh, they already had Deshaun Jackson, but then they went out and got one of the fastest receivers in the game in Marquise Goodwin. Uh, they drafted Jalen Rieger in the very first round, and then they also drafted a guy by the name of Quez Watkins who's even faster than him and Jonathan Hightower. All speed guys, all in the draft. Uh, so that's something that you can look forward to. On the defensive side, like I said, they fixed the cornerback spot by going ahead and bringing in uh, you know, veteran pro bowler Darius Slay who's always one of the best cornerbacks in the game because he has a great uh, height and speed profile, which a lot of times is the only thing that really matters. So 93 speed, 6 foot. That's all you really got to know. They also brought in Nickel uh, Roby Coleman, a really good slot corner, and then they have a couple of good young guys you could probably work up. Their biggest issue is probably the linebacking core, but they did bring in Jatavius Brown, another speed guy. They also drafted a speed guy in Davion Taylor. So if you take this team in a CFM, you have guys that you could work up at pretty much all positions, but they do have their weaknesses. Next up, we have the Dolphins. This was the lowest rated team in Madden last year, uh, and I think it was deserved. They definitely showed some some heart and some character, and they're definitely a, a program on the rise. Uh, but they made a lot of really good additions when it comes to Madden. Number one, they drafted Tua, I'm not even going to try to say his last name, Tua, Tua Vailoa. Uh, they drafted him fifth overall. Um, honestly, I mean, you have Josh Rosen on the roster. I know real life will probably never work out, but you could probably work him up and trade Tua, or, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they have a really good, uh, you know, a bunch of young quarterbacks on their roster right now. Their running back situation going into the last year is pretty pathetic. I know Kenyon Drake actually had a pretty decent year when he got to the Cardinals last year, uh, but ultimately their, their running back core looks a lot better now. They brought in Matt Breda, a real speedster out of San Francisco, a little bit of a fumbling problem, but a really good player in Madden. Then you got your power back in Jordan Howard. So essentially you have everything you need from the running back core right on the roster. Thunder and lightning right out the gate. On the defensive side, they made a couple improvements in the linebacking core, specifically bringing in Kyle Van Noy, uh, Shaq Lawson, you know, get a, a little bit of a, a pass rush from a young guy. You can probably still work up. But the area where they really hit it out the park, and I think they're going to excel, is their cornerbacking core. Byron Jones. Bringing in Byron Jones, who, in my opinion, um, I mean, he, I think that Xavier, Xavier Howard is probably a little bit better than Byron Jones. Uh, he definitely creates more turnovers. Uh, but ultimately, I mean, that's one of the best cornerbacking tandems in the game. Next up, we got the Seahawks. This is a team already had great running backs with Chris Carson, a power back, Rashad Penny, a little bit of a change of pace guy. Then they went ahead and added Carlos Hyde. 
So they're loaded in the backfield. They're pretty loaded at receiver too. Tyler Lockett, speedster. DK Metcalf, speedster. Then they added Philip Dorsett from the Patriots, another speedster. So they have speed for the all over the field. Uh, and then we get to the secondary, get to the defensive side. This is probably where they made their most improvements. I mean, with acquisitions like Quentin Dunbar, who's six foot three, a ninety-one speed cornerback, add him to Shaquille Griffin and Quandre Diggs to safety. Then you go ahead and you add Jamal Adams. I mean, the Legion of Boom could be back in a very big way, which is something that makes this team go uh moving on we got the denver broncos now this is a team that went out and just got weapons they already had one of the fastest tight ends in the game in noah fant you go ahead and you add that to Cortland sutton who had a breakout year last year then the first round they draft jerry judy only to come back around the second round and get cajun hamler all that speed and all that talent so you have an immediate three wide receiver set to grow or just use their speed whether if you're playing regs doesn't really matter like i said one of the fastest tight ends in the game as well uh, the offensive line improves slightly uh, but ultimately that's not what makes this team so good when you look at the running backs they already had a really good running back in philip Lindsay. then they went and added melvin gordon to give them one of the best two running back tandems in the game royce freeman's not a bad young running back either but he's going to get completely overlooked you could definitely get something out of him on the defensive side they added jarell casey who's still a top defensive player in my opinion on wall what is already one of the best defenses in the game next up we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this is a team I mean you know they added one of the biggest stars in the league in Tom Brady uh, but it's not even you know really about him I mean it made a lot of additions one of the bigger ones obviously is Rob Gronkowski I wouldn't have called it that until the EA went and gave him a 95 overall uh, at that point you got to say that's one of the biggest additions uh, to any team on any roster uh, they also drafted a, a good running back uh, but I really feel like Ronald Jones is probably the best running back on this roster they tried to improve their offensive line with their first round pick Tristan Worfs and then they drafted a free safety in the second round so ultimately the majority of their additions came via uh, draft picks uh, but ultimately I mean they got to make this list you get Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski you got to be on this list next up we got the Saints now the Saints made a couple of high profile additions James Winston as a backup quarterback I mean you could make the case that he could be the quarterback of the future for you it was a number one overall pick I mean I know this is mad and you got more control than him throwing picks in real life uh, on the receiving core bring in Emmanuel Sanders who's still pretty fast good veteran receiver gives him a great second option that they haven't really had and then they went in their draft and they drafted on the offensive side uh, with their first pick a guard which who played center in college by Cesar Ruiz they probably got the best offensive line in football then on the defensive side they add to their secondary we're bringing in Malcolm Jenkins who's a little bit older a little bit slower but he's still an impact player at least he can be if you play you know the type of defense where he's more in the box uh, but this is a very good uh, roster that they just added to Next up, we got the uh, the Ravens. I mean, the Ravens already had one of the best rosters in the league, and they went ahead and they drafted really well on the offensive side, bringing in J.K. Dobbins to add to an already dominant backfield. Uh, as far as the receiving core goes, I mean, they had to, once again, they had to add in the draft, and they drafted another speed receiver by the name of Devin DuVernay. I mean, he could be, you know, he's a 92 speed. That's a good addition. Then you go to the biggest addition, which is Calais Campbell, which they basically stole, I think, for a fifth-round pick. Um, he's, uh, once again, one of the highest-rated moved players in the offseason was him and they also picked up Derek Wolf which is no slouch he's also a really good player that came over from uh, spending a long time in uh, Denver so the defensive front is stout as it ever has been uh, then you go to the linebackers they went ahead and they added a couple of guys there but the most important one was Patrick Queen uh, their first round pick so loading up in the draft is really what got them on this board the next team on my list is the Chargers now the Chargers uh, made a couple of good moves in the draft as well bringing in quarterback Justin Herbert to be the future he's everything you really want physically to be a, a good quarterback We'll see how he works out. Other than that, I mean, they lost the receiver or two, uh, but for the most part, it's really just, uh, the, you know, business as usual. They're pretty much the same roster on offense, although they did bring in Trey Turner and Brian Balaga to solidify the offensive line, which is going to pay dividends. On the defensive side is really where they made uh, probably the most improvements. They already had one of the best cornerbacks in the game in Casey Hayward. They went ahead and added Chris Harris Jr., another really solid cornerback to that cornerback core. And basically, it's going to make one of them, them have one of the best secondaries in the league with Derwin James and Nasir Adderley from the year before gives them a really solid secondary they went ahead and they moved up back into the first round to get Kenneth Murray in the draft as well and this overall is just going to give them a really solid defense and offense
Which brings me to my last team. This is probably the team that did the most, in my opinion. And that's the Colts. The Colts went ahead. I mean, once again, they drafted a quarterback in Jacob Eason. I don't know if he's going to be anything, but you can see he's got pretty good measurables. You have a guy that you can, you know, ride for a little while in Phillip Rivers until he's ready to take over. Or Jacoby Brissett, uh, in my opinion, is still young enough uh, to be considered a, a possible building block if you're using this team in a CFM. They also drafted well at running back. They went out and got Jonathan Taylor. Here's a guy that, you know, they already have Marlon Mack. Now you add him and his speed, as you can see, a 93 speed. I mean, he's going to be a great addition. So they got a great one-two punch at running back now. The receiving core is loaded with talent. They lost Eric Ebron, but they went ahead and they brought in Trey Burton. So you're really just swapping out athleticism for athleticism in that regard. Uh, but the receiving core is really where it's at. I mean, T.Y. Hilton's already a beast. You got him. Jack DeWill's still already there as well. Uh, but then you have uh, some really good young receivers like Paris Campbell, who they drafted in the first round last year. And then one of their first picks this year, Michael Pittman Jr., gives them an awesome three-wide receiver set to grow in a CFM. And then they also made a great defensive addition on the defensive line by trading for DeForest Buckner, a young defensive star. So that's it. That's the video. If you guys want to see uh, more like top 10 teams to build in Madden 21, uh, let me know in the comment section the like button. I'll make sure to do that as well in the upcoming season. And other than that, that's it. Thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.